Superman of science And he loves to play with fire And the things you do You can do If you so desire Do try this at home With Mr. G Hello and welcome back To Do Try This at Home do Try This at Home is the show that takes ordinary household items and turns them into something, you got it, extraordinary. I'm your host, Mr. G, and yes, I've still got poison ivy on my arm, and it doesn't look all that great, but it's starting to dry up and go away. It doesn't itch anymore. Thank goodness. It was horrible for a while there. Anyways, what we're going to do today is we're going to be spiraling out of control. That's right. I'm not going to tell you exactly what I mean by that. You'll see. But what you're going to need is you're going to need some paper plates, you're going to need a barbecue skewer that I have conveniently taped a pin to the end of. You're also going to want to take a needle or pin and tape it to the blunt end of your barbecue skewer, the sharp end being the other side there. You're going to need a sharp knife, a hobby knife. Be very careful with this. Don't cut yourself. And you're going to need a magic marker. Um, red, just in case I do cut myself, and it'll blend right in. Um, you're going to need something to light your candles with. And you're going to need some candles. That's right. Um, I prefer, you should probably have a candle that's in a jar, something like this, that'll be the easiest for you to work with. And we're going to go ahead and use this candle right now. We're going to take the sharp end of our barbecue skewer, and we're going to put it down on one edge of the candle so it's sticking straight out. We're going to shove it right down in there like that. Pretty far away from the flame. You don't want, the, you don't want it to be right next to the flame, or the, the skewer will go up in flames itself. So we don't want that to happen. Now, I'm going to take a paper plate, and I'm going to draw on the paper plate a spiral pattern. If I can just get one paper plate. We're going to start by making a circle in the exact center, or as close to the center as you think you can get, of the paper plate. So we've got a circle. Now we're going to take from that circle, and we're going to draw out a real neat spiral pattern. And you don't want your spiral to be real wide. You want to get plenty of spiral arms to come out, like this but you want to keep it at least so that there's some distance between each of the lines of the spiral. So you've got something just like that. Now, take your knife and starting at the center, puncture right at the edge of that circle and just start to cut outward along your spiral that you just drew. Be careful not to cut the table below your plate, don't do that. And be careful not to cut yourself and just continue to cut around the drawing of the spiral that you made until you've got the whole spiral cut out. And let's see if I can actually get this to work. My knife's a little bit dull. I, uh, I should have grabbed a sharper knife, but, but this will work for now. And we just keep going outward and outward along our spiral line. Now, when you get to the very end of your spiral, watch what you do. You want to keep going out. You just keep going out like this. Again, don't cut the table below it. And if you think you might, put something down like a board so you don't have to worry about ruining the top of your table. Or else you'll probably uh, regret doing this particular trick. Once you get out near the edge of the spiral, what you want to do is you want to cut inward and release the spiral from the paper plate. So you have something that looks like this. Now, take your spiral and pull it out a little bit flatten your top down, so that the whole thing creates a real nice spiral. Now that will balance pretty well. You want, you want the edge to curl down as well, the end of the spiral here. So you might want to curl the whole thing down a little bit, just like this, like I'm doing. And then you want to make sure that it, it, it's flat at the top, and that it can balance on your finger like that. And that should work pretty well. Now, take your candle with the skewer sticking out of it, make sure that's fairly level, that skewer and lay your spiral on top of it like this. Now, hot air is more buoyant than cold air, therefore it rises. And watch what happens. We have created a spiral heat motor. That's right, a motor that's driven by the heat from the flame, and it continues to make the spiral swirl and swirl. Now, another thing that you can do, let me set this one over here, and you can watch that spin around. Another thing that we can do is we can take a paper plate and from the center we can just cut spokes just straight out like this. About an, I'd say about an inch apart starting near the center and just straight out, about an inch away and again straight out. 
want to be fairly close to the center where you start these spokes, straight out, and you want to get a good number of spokes like this. Now, that hot air rising is going up through that spiral and causing it to spin. But there's another way to get some objects to spin on top of it. Much like an airplane propeller works, this will work as well. Now, you want to get it so you've got those spokes cut out like that. I don't know if you can see those or not, I hope so. And then along the edge, we want to cut each of these about halfway across to the next spoke, like you see me trying to do here with my doll hobby knife. Yeah, that works pretty well. Now you're going to take those and you're going to pop those up like this. And what you're going to end up with when you bend those each up is a real nice looking sort of paper plate propeller. That's right. And it's kind of cool looking here. You want to make sure those are all about the same size and the same spacing. So it looks something like that when you're finished. See that? Now let's take our little spiral off of there. And let's move our candle back in front of us and watch the magic begin. If we can get it to where it balances in the center. This one's a little harder, a little tougher to get to balance. Watch. Now this one will not spin as quickly as the spiral spins, but look at this. Because we've got our fins cut at the top and the hot air is rising through the fins, it is pushing the plate around and around. Now, I've got some other shapes that I made earlier here on this chair next to me. And I'm going to show you some of these. And you can see that our paper plate with the cutouts on top spins around and around, just like our spiral. Although maybe it doesn't go quite spin as fast, it may start to pick up speed and start to spin faster as it progresses. Now, I've got some other spirals here that I cut out earlier that are all tangled up together, of course. You don't have to have such a long spiral, you can have thicker arms like this one, and this one should work. Let's see here. There it goes. So I've got a short spiral with thicker arms. In fact, that's spinning rather well. It's rather, spinning rather quickly, as you can see. Now I've got a, another spiral here that's got more of a, a snake head like at the top, and it spins in reverse. Here I've got a real long one that I made that's like a snake. If I can get the other one off of it. This one's got more spiral arms. Let's see how it works. Get creative. Try different shapes. Try different lengths of spiral. This one's kind of hard to balance. But once I get it balanced, yes, it starts to spin. And this one's much the same, a longer spiral. Here I've got another plate that I didn't cut very straight, but it does work. So cut out the different shapes. And these make awesome holiday decorations, like for uh, Christmas or for, this almost looks like a Christmas tree in fact, or for um, Thanksgiving. Uh, so use your imagination. Uh, you can draw a design on it. You, you can do all sorts of things. But the neat thing here is just one candle, the heat from one candle rising up is causing this to, to move. Now if I put more candles around them, like maybe put it in a group of three here, it spins even faster if it stays balanced. Now be careful. Always observe your spinning creation. Don't let it just sit there in the corner and spin off because if it does fall, the paper could catch on fire. We wouldn't want that. That would be a horrible thing. So there we go. With three candles, we get an even faster spin. So there we have it. The heat motor. That's what I'm calling it anyways. And again, different shapes you can make. And this is really cool and a lot of fun. I, I can see I, I'm going to probably decorate this Thanksgiving or Christmas with like 10 of these things laying around with all different shapes that I'll cut out more precisely and have them look a lot prettier. So have fun with this. And as always, do try this at home. that I have taped. Sounds like my dog is having a coughing fit in there after getting a drink. Hmm, let's start that again. That's right. I'm going to be making some 
really cool shapes that are driven by the heat of a flame. And these, uh, boy, that sucks. And um, I'll tell you what we're going to do today. First of all, let me tell you that, um, that I need to start that video over. <laughs> that was stupid. Some paper plates. A barbecue skewer that I have taped a sharp needle, or actually I used a pin, to the very end of. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is a pin taped to the end of that. We're going to need a magic marker, a sharp knife, so be very careful. Do not cut yourself with the sharp knife. We're also going to need something to light our candles with. This is a torch that I used to light mine. Mine are already lit though, so I guess I really don't need that, but you probably will. And what else are we going to do? What else are we going to need? We're going to need these paper plates, which I think I already said. Let's try this over. Let's, let's, why don't we go over here? Paper plates, this and that. Well, let's do it again. Over and over. 